the foundations in my eyes, and I think you probably agree, the first foundation that needs to be put in place is the actual entrepreneur that's starting the business. You know, a business isn't going to run without anyone behind it. So it has to be someone there, an entrepreneur running the business. So what would you say that you see from your clients and that you've seen in your experience in business that is holding entrepreneurs back from reaching their full potential? Yeah, it's a great question. So the common thing that I see is that they're focused on the money instead of the process. I want to get to 10K a month is a very common goal that you see with guys starting out. Okay, so then they focus on what are the strategies to get to 10K. And we need strategy, don't get me wrong. But the problem is the bottleneck is you. And so if you develop as an entrepreneur, then your business will develop and then the money will come. What does this mean on a little ticket, like a level down? Okay, so you need to develop the ability to focus, the ability to stay mentally and emotionally disciplined so that you can even execute on the strategy of doing 150 outreaches a day. Because if you can't do that, I can give you all the strategy in the world, but you're not going to execute on it because maybe you don't believe it's going to work. Maybe you just don't have the right skills to be able to execute it correctly. That's where you focus, is you focus on developing yourself. And this is where I say something that you've heard me say before, Barney, entrepreneurship is the biggest mirror because you have to face yourself. Why am I the way that I am and how am I going to overcome that? Because it's keeping me from having the success I want to in entrepreneurship. Whereas when you're working for someone else, it's much easier to hide those things or live in ignorant bliss. But now you're staring it right in the face when it's all on you and every area of the business is all on you as the business owner. And so that's what you need to focus back on is developing. Develop yourself first, focus on yourself first. That's how you get where you wanna go. You have to become who you wanna be to achieve what you wanna achieve. You have to become the kind of person that achieves that thing. It's true. It's like when you when you develop on develop yourself to be that version of yourself, you're stepping into being ready to achieve that. And it goes back to Pareto's principle. I know you're definitely aware of it, but it's the 80-20. I personally believe that 80% of a successful business is down to the person that started and runs the business. You know, it's down to their development, their mindset, their overall standpoint as a human being. It's down to them and where they are in their life. And then the 20% is the strategies, the, the team leadership, the systems you put in place, the marketing, the sales, etc. Do you agree with that? Do you think that that yeah. 80%, 20% rule applies here? Yeah, yeah, I do largely agree. I would say when you get into leadership stuff like that, it's like, yeah, you can talk about strategy all day, but the execution is going to be based on who you are. So it's going to be based on your development as a person, whether you can execute on those strategies. That's where the huge limiting factor comes in, especially for leadership. People are able to execute on strategies to get them to a certain level, but then to get to the next one, they have to become a good leader. In order to become a good leader, you have to work through so many things personally in your development, that becomes the bottom that can keeps you from reaching that that next level. Okay, so a big thing I've definitely come across is guys that are multi multi millionaires, super young, and they are ignorant to the fact or not being humble enough to say that it's them that's the issue because they feel like they've kind of made it, but they're actually not hitting their full potential. Because if they were, they could be doing way more or making more money and giving more impact, you know? So how, how would you frame that to a guy that is already, you could say, quote unquote, making it in the eyes of civilization and society, yeah. but not hitting his potential and his issue is himself? What would you say? So I would say there's a lot of guys that they do get to that point at let's say a young age and the only way that they're going to buy in to going through the growth pains is after they suffer in humiliating decline and so many times they have to crash and burn in the same way that i've had to accept that's one of the hardest things for me is to accept this person is not going to they might logically understand and i think guys that have said i logically understand what you're saying i just can't bring myself to do it because i've been able to get this far and have all this great stuff that most people dream of without going through that and 
that's a curse. It looks like a blessing, but it's really a curse. And so I would rather you get unlucky, have a harder time getting to that point and have to go through more personal growth. With all that being said, how do you walk them through that? One thing I like to say is that being a great coach is being a great salesperson because there's never something that's been harder to sell, in my opinion, than things that people need to grow in because you now have to make someone aware of things that they suck at. And then you have to get them to have the buy-in to go through the growth pains to now grow in that thing. Yeah, it it's true. So let's say you highlight these problems to someone. How do you sell the problems to them that they need to be fixed? So it's easy to just tell someone, you know, you suck at this, this, and this. What takes more skill is guiding them to that truth themselves by asking good questions. If someone has really bad social anxiety that's holding them back from actually building out a sales team to grow their business, for example, and to just get more clients, etc. They have a great product and they don't see it. Well, how, how do I get them to see that? Well, by asking them questions. Okay, so this is where you want to get. Doesn't it make sense that the best way to get there, you already have the service, you have the infrastructure. It's really just you building out your sales process and you know how you're going to generate leads. Okay, so this is the only thing. So what's the problem? Well, I'd want to close all those leads myself. And like, I don't know if I have the time for that. Well, we just went over all your systems and processes. You've done a great job of building out your business. It seems like you have a lot of availability now. Is that really the problem? Is it really time? Well, no, I guess it's not. Okay, then what is it? What's holding us back? Okay, now we're starting to kind of peel back the layers. Then we get into how do you feel when you think about getting on sales calls? Oh, I feel terrible. I, I don't. Okay. Okay. Now, now I'm guiding them to the answer. Okay. So what it really is, is that you have social anxiety because of this, this, and this that is causing you to not want to be in sales situations. So now we have to break down how do we to continue to grow in that social anxiety? And then also how do we grow in establishing a belief system around sales that serves us? And that serves the people that we're talking to. But they're not going to have the buy-in until you guide them to what they need to grow in. So you guide them and then you have to guide them to the answer as well. Because if they don't come to the answers themselves, they're not going to have the buy-in to go through that pain and that discomfort to do it the other you know, 167 hours of the week that they're not on a call with me. Yeah, 100%. And I would 100% agree. It's you kind of hand-holding <laughs> them to the point that they see the issue and can accept it themselves and that they're not in denial so that it doesn't feel like criticism because as soon as that happens that that's walls up and there's no hope <laughs> now sometimes man there's a lot of times where i talk to someone they're already very aware of their problem and they're frustrated and that's that's what i love right that's one thing i want to say if you're frustrated that's a good thing because if you're frustrated that means you care so it's good that you're frustrated now let's figure it out and then at the end, they still have to have that buy-in. Why do I keep going back to that? Because that's the biggest part. It's not that the strategies are usually very complicated. The strategies of personal growth are almost never complicated. It's just you don't feel like doing them. But the buy-in is the kind of activational energy that the individual needs to change. Simply put, it's what's pushing them yes. to get a little bit uncomfortable, to step out of their comfort zone and change and look themselves in the mirror and accept that they need to change in order to reach that that goal and reach their potential. In terms of potential, an interesting question for you. Do, do you think that potential can be limitless depending on the amount of time and focus you want to put on it? Yeah, I do think that people's potential is uncapped and I'll explain why. I honestly believe that in this life, with everything that we can grow in, there it's endless. Like you run out of time when you die in the amount that you can grow in. And I don't believe that anyone has ever met that cap of, of growing in everything that they could possibly grow in in this life when they died. Therefore, there is no such thing as capped potential because you can always grow in something. That being said, is there possibly a capped potential in some very specific skill or very, very specific trait for a given individual? Sure, I would say so. I think that there is a capped potential that you can reach in a certain skill where usually when you reach that level, just to maintain that, you're going to have to continue to put in a lot of effort because you're usually going to be world class at something, right? If you get to that level, but okay, like I'm already so good at this. 
I'm, I'm pretty much as close to perfection as you can get as an imperfect human being at this skill or this trait. So now I can just keep that there. But there's other skills, traits, and beliefs that complement that that you can continue to grow with. So it's possible to cap out in a very specific way, but not in a broader sense as a human being. I, I love that. I love that answer. I completely agree. I think the ability to develop oneself is limitless. It's just dependent on how much you're willing to give to it. You know, I don't think anyone, as you said either, I, I, I agree. I don't think anyone has ever or potentially will ever reach their complete potential in all aspects of their life in their lifetime. Don't think it will happen. The reason I ask this is because like be optimistic, you know, no matter where you are in your life, there is always potential that you can step into and you can always be greater and you can always do bigger things than you initially thought may be possible. That's one thing that I'm big on. Here's a practical way that I've heard that applied that I think is really great when it comes to entrepreneurship. I think it's a really good way to put it. We all know the, like the martial art belts, right? You go from white all the way to black, the colors get darker as you advance in a martial art, okay? So there's going to be that one to two, maybe three things that you reach a high degree black belt in your life if you have the growth mindset that we've been talking about and you're constantly improving yourself. Okay, maybe three things. There's people that accomplish incredible things that only have one. But then you have those other areas that you get to, let's say, a purple belt in. Why do you do that? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, it's great to be balanced as a human being. It's like we've talked about the different core areas of life, like health, wealth, and relationships. They complement each other. They affect each other deeply. So you want to make sure that you're at least to a certain degree in all of those. That's a that's kind of the bigger picture, obviously, core things. And we want to do the best we can in those areas. But at a certain point, you're going to have to make a decision how much you want to put your focus, energy, attention into those. Now, taking that one level down into entrepreneurship, the different areas of your business. Maybe there's eight to 10 different areas of your business total. Within those, you're going to have the one, maybe two that you're black belts in, and then the others that you want to get to a purple belt in. Why? Because even if you hire someone, and I know this is a real popular thing, right? Just get really good at one thing and then hire everything else. I agree to an extent. Yes, you're going to hire that thing, but if you have that purple belt capacity in that thing, then you are going to be able to manage and collaborate with the person that is managing that for your business much better. Now you're going to be able to empower that person. You're going to have much better productivity. If you have no idea how to execute on that area of your business, your ability to be able to max out that area of your business, no matter how good the hire is, is low. But you can't expect someone else in your business to treat it the same way that you do. And so you understand your whole business. And so for you to have those expertise to a certain degree in that area, it goes back to the 80-20 rule. You can get to a purple belt with 20% of the effort it takes to get to a black belt that gives you 80% of the capability. So put that time into those areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. And it goes into the saying of know a little about a lot. Like if you if you know a little about a lot, you can then begin to leverage a lot in your favor to propel your potential in a much quicker, much faster, much easier way. And when it comes to actual business, everything you said makes sense. And it's completely true. It's like, guys, learn how to, to be a purple belt on most of those, most of the things that your business does. For example, right now, we're being super reluctant to hire anyone, anyone. We want to be kind of experts in what we're doing just us and then we'll hire people that are beyond experts so high level so that they reach their full potential in their black belts in that one area and i think that's the way to move in business in life in everything i'll give you a great example of this i've seen this time and time again people exit companies people whatever they have millions and millions if not tens of millions of dollars in the bank and they still don't build a big team. They still put in a lot of the groundwork themselves at the beginning because they want to make sure that they're a purple belt in something before they hire for it. If you want to learn more about the things that you should focus on to become a successful entrepreneur, watch this video.